Hey guys, how's it going? Value Venture Investing here today. So, two days ago, I believe now, Tesla came out with their Q2 2020 earnings. Now, we're gonna be talking about those today. It wasn't supposed to be a spectacular quarter. But we're gonna quickly go over their financials, uh, some of the stuff that occurred. And then at the end of this video, make sure you stick around. I'm gonna be giving my opinion on whether I think Tesla stock is worth what it's trading at today. Uh, taking a look at the stock today, it was down quite a bit. I mean, the market's pulled back around $1,400 per share, but I mean, this thing's been trading almost as high as $1,700 right after the earnings came out. Now, one of the reasons that I think that happened was that this was a bit of a surprise. Keep in mind, with these earnings, uh, Fremont was closed down for the, quite a bit of time. Elon was fighting with um, California, essentially, to get that back open, got it open. Shanghai was closed for a bit. I mean, that opened up a lot sooner. So there wasn't a lot of high expectations uh, with this quarter, and it's not necessarily, uh, you know, supposed to be a phenomenal quarter. Nonetheless, revenue came in at about six point oh three billion dollars for three months. That's pretty damn good, um, and it was only expected to be about four point seven billion dollars. So that was a huge beat right there. Net income again, we had our fourth consecutive quarter of profitability, and that's why. We can now look at it and it actually has a PE and we'll get into that after so stick around um, so the net income was 104 million dollars so we had an EPS about 50 cents now a lot of uh, financial websites are quoting at like two dollars and six cents EPS but they're using the non gap I have no idea why they're doing this it's like they're being biased positively uh, for Tesla for some reason but these are counted this is gap generally accepted accounting principles we're gonna go by that uh, because non gap is kind of like they can make up their own rules a little bit in some way so we won't go into that but this is the official numbers cash actually grew as well to 8.6 billion dollars that's been my biggest thing um, with Tesla uh, at least in the past I thought that maybe they'd have some troubles with financials but they've been doing very great so right now let's take a look at their state their financial statements that they put out and the report that they put out about yesterday or the day before so again like I said here we're not going to be going over everything if you guys want to look this up uh, I encourage you to do so online but this quarter wasn't supposed to be phenomenal uh, in terms of the highlights cash they had a 535 million dollar increase in cash and cash equivalents like I said to 8.6 billion dollars operating cash flow less capital expenditures they like to call it that it's free cash flow was 418 million dollars love free cash flow profitability again here 327 million dollars gap operating income five percent operating margin q2 104 million dollars like i said gap income so net income and they again have a non-gap in here as well you can look if you want uh in terms of operations the next u.s gas uh gigafactory site uh, was selected um, and preparations are underway so we'll talk about that a little bit later in this report um, this is something that's phenomenal I'll talk about this as well I love this increase the model s range from to 402 miles so they keep you know that's what so the competitive advantage of uh, Tesla is that they're like computers on wheels people say right so they can uh, be augmenting the software to get better EPA and of course the model Y uh, and China made model 3 production rate continue Increase. You can read the summary here if you want. Um, I'll leave it up on the screen. Now the financial summary. Okay, um, a lot of these don't look great, but again, keep in mind that we have had this, you know, shutdown that has occurred, and this is not a strong quarter. So you're going to see things that aren't too great. It's not a phenomenal quarter, but it's, you know, in my opinion, pretty damn strong considering what was going on. Automotive automotive revenues uh, for Q220. Uh, 20 you can see highlighted in red everything's q2 and then we have q1 before that q4 q3 q2 we have uh, quarter over quarter and year over year on the right there uh, it was about 5.1 billion dollars quarter over quarter it's up one percent but it's actually down year over year again so which isn't great one thing that they're making a lot of their money on is regulatory credits so it says below there of which are regulatory credits 428 million so that's more than they've ever had quarter over quarter that's up 21 percent 286 percent year over year so that's something to keep in mind because other companies just can't keep up with um you know producing as much so they're essentially selling them uh to tesla so take that with you what, what you will i think it's potentially kind of negative long term if these other companies step up and start being able to do it themselves that's going to be some revenue tesla is not going to get automotive gross margin is the you know one of the most important things here 
Uh, it's 25.4%, slightly down from last quarter. Uh, but year over year, it's you know it's up significantly, so that's something great to see. And of course, total revenues, like I said, were about six percent or six percent, six billion, uh, up one percent from last quarter, but down five percent year over year. Uh, so net uh, income attributed to the common shareholders again, gap, like I said, is a hundred and four million dollars. It's up five hundred fifty percent year over year, but it's not available. Um, oh, sorry, quarter over quarter, but it's not available year over year because they weren't profitable that time last year. Earnings per share, again here, this is diluted gap, uh, gap like I said, it's 50 cents, so now I'm gonna be referencing this later, so uh, I'll probably put it up on the screen, but look at this, we had 50 cents this quarter, eight cents last quarter, 56 cents the quarter before, and again, 78 cents uh, in Q3 of 2019, so we have four consecutive quarters that we can use, and again, like I said, they're showing all the financial channels that I've been looking in terms of you know, CNBC or whatever it might be, um, is showing the non-gap of $202.18. So don't know why they're doing that, but anyway, there it is for you guys to see. Free, free cash flow, like I said, is $418 million. Phenomenal to see that. If you look back, I mean, they've had some uh, more, you know, more positive cash flows, but it's kind of been all over the place. Last quarter was pretty negative, uh, but they got a lot of capital expenditures right now. In terms of some of the notes in ter uh, that they're talking about in terms of their financial summary here, uh, so they're saying revenue um, in Q2, uh, they remain relatively flat quarter over quarter. So the positive impact of higher vehicle deliveries, higher regulatory credit revenue, like I said, and higher energy generation and storage, storage revenue was somewhat offset by lower vehicle average selling price um, and lower services and other revenue. So, I mean, that's also a positive this going forward as well, is that they're, they're having a higher energy uh, generation and storage revenue, uh, which is still a really pretty small uh, part of their business. In terms of profitability here, they're saying our operating profit improved in Q2 despite the challenging circumstances. Uh, positive impacts included lower operational costs due to temporary reduction in employee compensation expense, a sequential increase in regulatory credit revenue, like I talked, and of course, again, this deferred revenue recognition of $48 million that I don't really like um, in terms of uh, full self-driving uh, uh, software when it becomes released. So they were able to recognize it looks like about $48 million in terms of that when it came due or when the, the feature became due uh, around this quarter. And of course, these positive contributions, they said, were offset by significant costs uh, related to factory shutdowns, which is huge, you know what I mean? So we gotta take that into account, as well as sequential increase in uh, the non-cash uh, SBC expense, primarily attributable to a $10, $101 million related 2018 CEO award milestone. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Elon just got a ton of cash um, so that's, of course, the page shareholders are going to be paying for that essentially, right? And down below here, they talk about how uh, their manufacturing costs have actually been driven down uh, in Shanghai, of course. So um, that's something that we're going to have to watch going forward. And of course, their cash increased significantly as well. Now, in terms of their actual production here, SNX production is about, you know, 6,000 units here, I believe. I think we're in 6,000. Yeah, so down significantly, 59% and 56% respectively. Model 3 and Y production, uh, we're down 13% from last quarter, but we're still up 5% year over year. Uh, but again, we expect that to hopefully ramp up. So total production of everything is about 82,000 uh, units there. Um, so they're about down 20% quarter over quarter and 5% year over year. But in terms of deliveries, again, we're seeing much of the same S and X. This is not really their mean gravy anymore. They're dropping prices on these. We're down 13% uh, quarter over quarter and down 4% year over year. Uh, the Model 3 and Y, which is what we're more concerned about, that was a huge amount, 80,000. Um, quarter to quarter was actually up 5%, and year over year it was still up 3%. So, of course, their total deliveries are around 90,000, almost 91,000. Uh, up over quarter over quarter, but again, down year over year. You guys can take a look at the solar and the uh, storage. I'm not going to go into that because it's such a small part of their business right now. Could have some potential uh, future implications for sure, um, but I'm not going to go into it on this video. Uh, again, if you've watched my other videos on Tesla, what I like to look at is the supercharger stations at the bottom here and supercharger connectors. I love seeing that these things are being increasing regardless. So in terms of the stations, we're to over 2,000, it was up 6% quarter over quarter and 20% year over year. And supercharger connect connectors, which is what you need, you need the infrastructure, we're about 18,000, up 6% since last quarter and 30% year over year. So you can see, if you take a look sequentially there how it goes, um, that's something that, you know, I think is the phenomenal competitive advantage of Tesla.
I'll put this slide up here on vehicle capacity. You guys can read this if you want. Um, I think the most interesting aspect of this was uh, Berlin here. It says at the bottom in Germany, one of our biggest European markets, the Gigafactory Berlin, Berlin construction continues to progress. As we build new factories, we continue to iterate on the factory and product design to improve efficiency, cost, and technology. We are implementing further structural improvements based on our learning from prior factories. So this is how actually Tesla is driving the profitability. Um, especially with Shanghai there and I like to see them building huge capital expenditures um, but you know I like to see that and of course they have the chart here about the global, global vehicle deliveries in Q1 in the first half of 2020 very interesting to see that Tesla actually you know was positive where all the other ones were negative core technology you guys can read this if you like as well I feel like some of this you know they're talking about the autopilot and full self-driving has gotten slightly better they're saying it can stop at intersections or drive right through them without confirmation great news but I mean Elon's been saying by the end of the year he's gonna have like a fully he's been saying this for a while like a fully autonomous vehicle I don't know if that's gonna happen so I haven't been following this too closely what they say on here because the iterations have seemed a little bit slower lately I mean let me know down below guys if you disagree um, but that's a tough thing to have full self-driving uh, capabilities right so something that you know I think might be coming a little bit later than some people think battery and powertrain we already talked about this and I love seeing this chart here how they always compare it to their competitors the Porsche um, and the, also the premium SUV EPA range just destroying them all the time so the outlook I think this is something that maybe has taken the stock down it was initially so positive um, you know the earnings that came out because it wasn't supposed to be a phenomenal quarter but the outlook is a little bit mixed um, so you know, under the introduction here they're saying they although they successfully ramped vehicle production back to prior levels it remains difficult to predict whether or not there'll be further operational interruptions or how global consumer sentiment will evolve in the second half of 2020 so they're saying they're going to continue to update their outlook as necessary they still think in terms of volume they're gonna be able to do 500,000 500,000 vehicle delivers for the year which is hopeful. Um, of course, this is all they're like they were saying, dependent on what's going forward. Liquidity, they said this for a while, they think that they should have sufficient liquidity to fund their product roadmap. And they've got a lot in their roadmap, like we said, the truck, the semi. Um, so very interesting to go forward to see if they'll be able to do that. But I mean, they've been able to really manage their cash very well as of lately. Profit for the, tra for the trailing 12 months, like we talked about, um, that's what you need, four quarters. Uh, to basically be doing some of these metrics. Uh, they, were, they achieved a gap operating margin of just under 5%, uh, and they expect this to grow over time, ultimately reaching industry level, uh, leading levels with the capacity um, expansion and localization plans underway. Again, under product here, we are continuing to build capacity for Model Y at Gigafactory Berlin, Berlin and Gigafactory Shanghai. That's gonna be a huge seller, I think. And we remain on track to start deliveries for the vehicles uh, from both locations in 2021. The next U.S. Gigafactory site has been selected and preparations are underway. Uh, test assembly deliveries will also begin in 2021, uh, which is, I think that might be a little bit later than they initially anticipated. I'm not too sure on that. Let me know down below, guys. Uh, so they continue, of course, to say, to invest in their protocol roadmap. A couple of photos I'll have across the screen here, guys. Uh, always interesting to see these photos. I love how they put these in. Uh, this first one's uh, Gigafactory Shanghai, Model Y factory. The second one again is the interior of the Gigafactory uh, Shanghai. Uh, we have another one here as well. I mean, look at all the robotics, it's pretty cool. Um, then they have the Model Y factory interior. Everybody I'm sure wants to see that. And what I found the most interesting was when we go into Berlin here, uh, we have the construction. And you can actually see some of these videos on YouTube of with drones of, of how the production is progressing and that's really interesting to watch and the rendering wow that looks really amazing right so that's as far as I'm gonna go with those financial statements of course they have their actual financial statements down below uh, but it's much of what I'd said already what I'm gonna get at now is more is Tesla worth $1,400 a share $1,500 a share okay I'm gonna preface this with the fact that I'm gonna be using PE if you don't know what PE is it's the price to earning stock price divided by their earnings per share so essentially it's how much you're spending, you know, for every dollar in earnings to buy the stock. If it's a hundred times, you're spending a hundred dollars for every dollar you invest, right? And keep in mind, this is only one metric, but 30 years down in the future, whatever, when you're old and gray and you're looking at a mature company, it will have a, like a, like a 
like I like to call a normalized PE, something that's like 20 to 30, you look at a lot of mature companies, it can be trading anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 PE, right? So this is saying when Tesla's fully established, they you know reach almost saturation, they're, they're, they're a very uh, established company. So again, Keep in mind, PE is stock price, so that's just the stock price, the $1,400 per Tesla, we'll say for now, divided by earnings per share. Again, earnings per share has to be the last four quarters, which is what we have, right? I'll put that up on the screen right now as well. You can see that. So for the last four quarters, if you add those numbers up, it's $1.92 per share. That's EPS. Another way of finding it, of course, is finding your net income and dividing that by you know the number of shares outstanding but they give you the EPS there so it's easier to do so if you actually look at the PE of Tesla as we speak right now at $1,400 a share on the top here like I said divided by the earning per share of $1.92 Tesla's trading at 729 times earnings so on the surface this seems seems absurd like I would not pay this whatsoever right but there's a little bit more to that right at first, I thought it was just the fact that a lot of institutional investors are getting involved. So institutional investors being, you know, people on Robinhood, people on Webull. There's a link in the description <laughs> to get one free stock if you guys want. Um, but it takes a lot of institutional investors to move a company with, you know, you know, a three hundred billion dollar market cap. So, but I think it's almost like a compounding effect as it's slightly moved. The nether. You know, uh, big firms and stuff have to get in or to match things and whatnot, right? But that's what I thought at first. But if you look at it, it's possible we could actually get to this price. And I'm going to show you how. A dollar ninety-two right now. So say it had EPS of ten. So that's saying about five times the net income they make right now, which people could anticipate. You're still trading 140 times earnings. That's expensive. But say you wanted to get to a more normalized about 28 times earnings. It's 28 times earnings. They would need, with how many shares they have outstanding right now, about fifty dollars uh, per share of earnings EPS, and then that would get them a kind of a, you know, a reasonable thing. So we could say in you know twenty years or years they could be making fifty dollars per share. But the thing is, how do you get to fifty dollars earnings per share? You get earnings by revenue, and then down to the bottom line, net income, and then you divide that by how many shares there is. I hope this is not too complicated, guys. Rewind if you have to. Right, so how do you get there? We know where we're at right now. We know that they have about $6 billion in revenue a quarter. I think they have around 24, 25 billion roughly per year of revenue. So what I thought was, let's give Tesla the benefit of the doubt. Right now they make about $6 billion this quarter. We're talking about one quarter. Their net income is $104 million. So the net income they bring from the top line down to the bottom in terms of you know, taxes, expenses, the cost of goods sold, all that, administrative expenses, they bring about 1.7%. So it's not hugely profitable, and of course they've struggled with the profitability. Let's compare them to a company like Apple, who's been one of the most, as far as I'm aware, profitable companies of all time. Last year they made around $260 billion in revenue, and they brought home about $55 billion in net income. So they're bringing about 21%, 21.1%. Phenomenally profitable. Let's pretend Tesla at its peak becomes just as profitable as Apple. Personally, I don't think it's gonna happen, but some people think that it will. Apple's taken a long time to get there. So how do you get, like I said, to this 50 times earnings? So right now we're at $1.92, so almost $2. Let's just say $2 EPS. To get to 50, you need 20 times, 25 times more net income, right? Because right now we have the net income that gives us $1.92, 25 times more of that is 50, which would give us a reasonable PE. So if you look on screen, I'll put on right now, the last four quarters in terms of the uh, net income they brought in, you add up the last four, I'll put them on the screen right here right now so you can see or you can look in the financial statements. That's $368 million in net income right now. But like we said, they got to be 25 times more profitable. So that's like saying they're making $9.2 billion a quarter. $9.2 billion. So I brought that down here. So how much revenue would they have to generate to get $9.2 billion? Well, like I said, we're, we could do what they actually make, but we're going to give the Apple 
profitability of 21%. 21% of 43 billion is 9.2 billion. So they'd have to generate about $43 billion in revenue uh, per year. Could do it, but again, keep in mind the assumptions. The assumptions are that they're as profitable as Apple, right? So if we look over here again, say the share price is $1,400 per share, like I said, we divide it by 50, same thing I have over here, that's 28 times earnings. So you could do it, it could happen, but in terms of where we're at right now at the level of profitability, it'd be like over half a trillion dollars in revenue they need per year, which is way more than any company makes even right now. Also keep in mind that these numbers we're doing right now are in the future. So when you're investing, you have to discount those numbers back, meaning that these numbers will actually be uh, smaller in terms of the stock price. So those are the assumptions that you need going forward. Do you think that Tesla will be as profitable as Apple or more so? And do you think that they could generate this kind of revenue, $43 billion per year, and bring in that kind of net income? It's possible. Personally, I don't think it's going to happen anytime real soon, but way, way in the future, it might happen. But we're still trading at that price right now. So that gives you that will give you guys a little bit of thought as to why I don't own shares anymore. I sold at 900 because I think, realistically speaking, as of today, Tesla could be worth four, five, six hundred dollars a share reasonably. I mean, they've even blown past my expectations. I never thought they'd be profitable this quick and stuff like that. But in terms of this, it's rock solid unless i'm making a mistake here guys um in terms of a price earnings uh, multiple and this is something that you see with companies regardless in the future you you will see it and people will be looking at it from this perspective this is just one perspective as well you can do discount cash flow analysis free cash flow that kind of stuff right but we won't go into that so those are the assumptions you you make so on first sight it's like wow 729 earnings no thanks Right? That's what we're at right now. But if you look into the future and you think these phenomenal things could happen, it could be worth that or close to it. But when it's getting up $1,700, $1,800 a share, this thing could run over $2,000. Who knows where it's going to go, right? Nobody knows. But it's expensive right now, but it's possible. So I'd love to know what you guys think about that. Leave your comment down below. Do you think these are reasonable expectations? Some people say like, oh, they're going to be making over a trillion dollars in revenue. I Personally, I don't believe that kind of stuff, right? I don't believe it's gonna be there. Maybe future companies will make that much, but we gotta keep in mind, this is an amazing company, love it, love the products, but it is an automotive company too. So you keep in mind, you might not wanna to compare it to other automotive companies, but take a look at least to get an idea of how much money they actually generate. It's amazing how Tesla's done this already. So I hope that guy gives you guys a bit of um, insight into why I think about the way, Tesla the way I do, and I hope it wasn't too complicated and convoluted uh, if you have any questions leave them down below again guys as always don't forget to subscribe like the video really helps the channel grow really appreciate you guys watching it um, that's gonna be it for today guys see you in the next one